it's hard to say this and then not engender you guys aren't taking this seriously enough or you guys don't understand this. So I, I want to be, speak out of both sides of my mouth, which I do particularly well. Um, <laughs> I, I, I put more value on this. I think there's a, there's a moment in time where that, where that, even for the man on the street, helps. And secondly, cri crises like these pass sooner than we think when we're in the midst of the crises. And for no other reason, unfortunately, it's because other crises will come along, not necessarily and hopefully not between Germany and America, but where the world needs Germany and America working mm -hmm. seamlessly together. And the biggest reason to make sure that we've got as fluid and as open and, and, and nimble a cooperation uh, as, uh, in terms of intelligence and, and all that relates to that are the real threats to innocent people out there from terrorists. And so that's, let's not forget, and we've got a good track record there. We have to build on that. Um, we, the, the more nimble, the more, there's no zero sum game across the Atlantic. The extent to which Europe is doing well and Germany is in the middle of that driving a, a Europe which is on the balls of its feet is growing, unemployment reducing, uh, going by the day toward a more co cohesive body. That's good for us. There's just no doubt about that. There's one thing we have not really talked about, which I suspect you talked about earlier on the um, economic panel. And I would just make one observation, which is a little bit out of this context, and that is energy. You've got an energy revolution in both of our countries right now. Boris referred to it uh, to, to some degree. Um, but what the consequences of that going forward are, are going to be fascinating to look at, but it's got real bilateral implications. Um, and from my taste, if I were minding the store on the German side, and I, uh, by the way, the more jobs we create in America, uh, the, the stronger we are. But boy, you don't like to see you're taking jobs from one of your best friends in the world. And there's, for my taste, the balance of investment interest is out of norm at the moment. And again, that's a, that says a lot, and I'm proud of that, about what's going on in America. But again, this is Germany. This is one of, if not our best friends in the world. And We've got to make sure, I think it behooves both of our interests, our long-term enlightened self-interest, not necessarily our cold-blooded, how many jobs are you going to create next month interest, that that is, you want your friends to be big and strong and unencumbered on the world stage. Um, and that's something that I think we have to watch very carefully. I would like to come back to, to your observation or your hope about that we will be through this affair more or less within a short period of time. Not days. Okay. Not days, not weeks, not months, but <coughs> shortly, whenever. Um, may I express my doubts on that a little bit? Because m most of the time I meet people in Washington, <coughs> not only from the Republican Party, but from the government and others. They always complain about what Germany and Europe has done during the Iraq II war. And I try to understand why the American politicians and Mar many American people are always talking about that, even 10 years after. And if we are fair with ourselves, we have to confess again that something happened which, um, well, uh, re you, you remember that the Red-Green government in uh, 2002 had to take a confidence vote to bring the majority of the people uh, behind uh, the Afghanistan mm. intervention. This intervention was the last action we jointly took between Europe and America, and since then, all the actions were taken with deep controversies. So that's the reason why so many people, and that's not only the Bush family, it's many others in this country, are still thinking about that and complaining about that. And from my perspective, they are right in complaining about that. 
And from our side, you will hear that with the NSA issue in five years or in 10 years' time again. So what I want to say is that most of the people have a much longer memory on these issues than most of the politicians think or hope. And therefore, we have to work on something which is now becoming fundamental. And fundamental means, in my view, that we have to reestablish the fundament of the German-American cooperation. Let's be fair and honest with each other. Things have fundamentally changed over the last 10 or 15 years. And it has more happened than just Germany's reunification or European reunification. In between, since then until today, so many things have happened which should not have happened in this way. That this is now the opportunity, and there I agree completely with you, that this agreement is now the opportunity to, s to show how seriously we find this German-American or European-American cooperation. And that's the reason why I agree with Bob Kimmett and others. This goes far beyond the economics. You know, to that point, Jack, it's not just the, the first thing you look at is how many jobs it's going to create, how, right. it's, how much it's right. going to increase, it, which, sure. is, which is incredibly important. The reason why Bob gets to where he gets to, and Friedrich as well, the bigger reason is, frankly, who sets the standards? Who's, who, right. wh where is the core of, of, of the next 50 years in terms of standards, regulation, the future of commerce? And there's an opportunity to take the largest economy in the world, the largest economic right. block in the world, and put them into one box, hugely powerful with enormous implications. And, and, and as I understand it, um, uh, Dietmar, there's really n that, that w these two gentlemen said something that you would not disagree with and will probably not be a disagreement within the coalition, as far as I understand it. Maybe with the exception of the fact that you mentioned that the uh, discussion of intelligence might get caught up in that discussion, but it sounds like there's no disagreement here on the importance of what Friedrich and uh, Phil Murphy just said. No, there is no disagreement, and may I add briefly one point? I think what is important when we talk about um, how to really um, um, work uh, such a uh, um, free trade agreement out and what should be the standards and, and the framework. I think what both sides must be aware before they started in the concrete negotiations, how much they are willing and able to say that cooperation plays a tremendous role what degree of cooperation both sides are accepting in a way that you sometimes say, because cooperation is so important for me, I'm willing to make a compromise, um, even a compromise where I would say in my national interest, it's a very hard compromise. Um, and I think the deep rooting um, mistrust <coughs> that came out with with uh, came out with with this uh, NSA uh, issue is that a lot of people in in Europe and especially in Germany think that at the end of the day cooperation is not or has not that high ranking position in in an in an strategy for the US for uh, securing their national interests, that um, if it comes really to a hard situation, they will go alone and not try to find the compromise in cooperation. Because um, that every US president, every US administration must do what they can do to protect their people, to protect their interests. That is nothing um, where we in Germany say, no, that shouldn't be. And sometimes if people think so, they are naive. But that w we have the feeling that in, in the issues of, of, of intelligence, of surveillance, there are any longer no red lines and that there are not um, strategies that say we will not do everything that we could do because in some points cooperation and looking what how to um, handle the allies are much more important than to get everything that we could get with intelligence. This kind of mistrust 
that uh, that's right we can only um, push away if in the next years the people the normal people can see oh look in the debates and in the negotiations about the free trade agreement both sides giving a high degree to compromise and cooperation and not um, will I win in my position or in that. And if we do not create this kind of an environment and if we do not create concrete compromises and concrete cooperation that the people can see, we will not, fight, uh, we will not get back to that trust that is necessary. Yeah, I, 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 see that point. I, mean, I, I see that point very clearly. I mean, I think that it relates to one of the things that was in the essay about this whole panel. And that is the question of governance these days. Politicians are looking at a more fragmented electorate, and they can be a little bit more difficult to coordinate and, and sell a message to, and a coordinated message at that. One thing I would say, and I think Phil will back me up on this, there are enough people in the United States that feel as well that there is something that we have to corral, that there is a problem out there that's bigger than we are. And I think that kind of bridge can be built. There is a, an equation here to be to be to be balanced, and it's it can be perhaps, you know, summarized in a, in something I heard just recently, in another conference. We have to find a way to balance the need, the the, the desire to connect with the need to protect, and how do we do that? And in order to do that, I think we have to expand the lens of the camera so that we're not just looking at ourselves, and ring fencing ourselves around the dangers. We can't do that. <laughs> 